everyone, it's Sherry. I hope that you are having a wonderful day. Y'all, as usual, we are going to do some fun, beautiful, and practical paper crafting. Stay tuned. Welcome to my channel. I am so glad that you decided to stop by and welcome to all of my new subscribers and to all of my new friends. And welcome back to all of my longtime subscribers and longtime friends. Thank you guys so much for the awesome way in which you support me and my channel. For those of you who might be window shopping for a YouTube home, I think this is the place for you. So go ahead, open that door, come on in, hit that subscribe button. I'd love to have you. You guys know that I love to make notebooks and today is no different. We're going to make a beautiful flip top notebook and to that notebook we're going to add an elastic closure but that elastic closure is also a nice bookmark or placeholder for your notebook so i'll give you a closer look in just a minute but y'all know what time it is it's time to make it all right y'all so here's a closer look at today's awesome flip top notepad when finished it measures five and five eighths by five and five eighths and it is three eighths of an inch deep so what i've done is added an elastic band and this band will make it possible to keep your book closed if you want it closed. It's also a great way of saving your place if you happen to be writing a note but you need to stop for some reason. Just go ahead and tab it with your elastic band and that'll save your place. When you're not using it, it just wraps around the back. So very easy to make, very quick. Here's what you're going to need. So I am using a five and a half by five and a half inch notepad. And I got these from Tuesday morning many, many years ago. And the pad actually has 120 sheets on it. I'm breaking mine down into sets of 30. And then I started with a beautiful piece of 12 by 12 and I cut it down. So I have one piece that is six and a half by 12. And then I have one piece that is five and a half by 11 and a half. So you can make this using one piece of 12 by 12 decorative paper or cardstock, whatever it is you want to cover yours with, wallpaper, contact paper, whatever is going to work for you. And then this is a chipboard project. So I have two pieces that measure five and five eighths by five and five eighths. And then I have a two by two ephemera square and a mat for that square, which is two and a quarter by two and a quarter. And the mat is just cardstock. And then finally, I have an eight and a half inch strip of elastic. So very easy to do this project. I really won't be showing you anything that you probably don't already know when it comes to making your notepads, but I'm going to go ahead and walk you through the process anyway. So I have my five and five eighths by five and five eighths piece of chipboard, and this is a medium weight, so if you're interested in the chipboard that I use, please check my Amazon storefront. The link is in the description box. And because my spacing is going to be very, very tight on this project, when I place my piece down, I'm placing it down, giving myself about a quarter of an inch for my side border. Usually I allow myself a little bit more, but we are dealing with some very tight placement here. So I am just peeling away my tape backers. And now I'm going to take my second piece and place it down. Again, you can see I have about a quarter of an inch in spacing on that side as well. And then I'll just stand it up and train my paper to fold. If you're working with a thicker paper that you think might crack, go ahead and take your stylus, bone folder, whatever it is you're using to score, press it against the chipboard and just score all the way around your project. But because my paper is really text weight paper, meaning that I can run this very easily through the printer, I don't need to do that. So I am just going over this one more time because I want to make sure that it's ready to be mitered. So now when I miter, I'm going to go straight across. on all four corners. And now I'm going to take my tape runner and I'm just going to run some tape. 
I did get a question asking me how I'm able to get my tape runner to glide so easily. What I do with my tape runner, and a lot of you probably do this as well, is I try to hold it at like a 45 degree angle when I am running it across whatever I'm placing tape on. I don't hold it straight up and down like this, and I don't hold it flat like that. I actually tilt it just a little bit at that 45 degree angle, and I have found that my tape comes out pretty smooth for me. Now with this particular tape runner, you will on occasion get the tape built up around the roller head. Just take something and pull that out and throw it away so that you can get all of your tape to come out and you don't have to worry about wasting any of the tape on your roller. So I am just folding this over. Like this. Use my big old spatula to get that nice and stuck. And so when I place down my liner, I'll be placing it just like this. I'm using pattern on pattern, so it's going to be a nice consistent look throughout. So now we're going to go ahead and just place our tape. And I am placing tape down to cover my chipboard. And then I'll place a skinny piece right here. Please make sure that you are checking my Amazon storefront for some of the products that I'm using. And then we're just going to take that liner piece and we're going to go ahead and place tape along the edge of the liner piece on all four sides. So now we can peel away the tape backer. And this is the point at which we need to place our elastic if you are going to be placing elastic on yours. You can make this without elastic. You can actually substitute ribbon if you want, but I like the elastic because it's stretchy. So I'm going to take that elastic and just place it about half an inch in, and then we go around the back side. and bring the rest of it in. Now, I didn't pull too tight, but I pulled it tight enough so that it's not just dangling here. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to take some more tape and I'm going to place tape over the elastic. And I'm doing this because I want to make sure that my elastic won't come undone. This is just an added step that I'm doing. If you feel comfortable with yours being placed down the way that you have placed it, you don't really have to do the step. So now we're going to go ahead and peel away the tape backer from the liner. And I am going to stand for this part because I want to make sure that I try to get as even of a placement as I can. And then I am going to just go over this and make sure I have a nice stick. Then I'll go in and define that spine and I'm not using a chipboard spine. And I can take this, stand it up and bend it along the spine just to get a sharper crease. Then I can stand it up like this, take my big old spatula and really work that spine. So there is the front of my book. Now I can bring in my notepad, make sure that it's going to fit, and it does. I am going to take some glue and I'm going to place this down using my glue because I want that working time that I have when I'm using glue. If you don't want to make yours a one and done, you can just tweak this process so that you can turn it into whatever it is you need for it to be. And now that we have it in there, I will go ahead and just make sure I have a nice stick. We can close that top and you can see how professional that actually looks. So now I can take my elastic band, pull it over the top, and there we have it nice, closed and secure.
So I'm going to bring in my little two by two piece of ephemera. My glue is what happens to be out. So I'm just going to use that. You can use tape, you can use a glue stick, you can use a tape runner, whatever is convenient and it's going to work for you. Let's add some glue to the back. Keep these very simple. And this really is a very gender neutral pattern that you can make for anyone. So y'all, that is how easy it is to add elastic to one of your notebooks if you want to make it a closable or a notebook that has a placeholder like this. Elastic does the trick. So I have brought the first one back in and you can see how I have the elastic closing the pages of the book. And there's the back side. And then here you can see how we use the elastic just to hold our place on where we might have been taking notes. Then once we're finished taking notes, if you want to, just pull it up and over. Easy, easy peasy. So guys, I hope that you have enjoyed this really quick way to use elastic with your notebooks. If you have, please hit that like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join this amazing online crafting family. You guys, as always, please be safe, be kind, be the reason someone smiles today. Happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.